Hello and welcome back to Cats Science and Maths. Now we are the channel that will be taking you from the very beginning of your GCSE course in Science and Maths to the very end in very short, easily digestible videos just like this one. This is Chemistry Lesson 1 and if you've arrived here it's probably because you've been googling things like atomic number, mass number or even atomic structure. So I will waste no further time and we will dive into those and hopefully ease any confusion you might have about those. Um, so this is the symbol for sodium and you may have seen something like this in your own science lessons where a teacher's presented a symbol for an element to you on the board and there's been two numbers next to it. Your teacher may even have told you that the bottom number is called the atomic number and he may have told you that the top number is called the mass number. Now if you get a little bit confused about which is which, the mass number is always the biggest number. Okay, so think mass, massive, it's the biggest number. But your teacher may have expected you to somehow uh, understand what these numbers mean, and that might be where the confusion lies. So before we go into what those numbers actually mean, we have to just refresh our knowledge on atomic structure. Now we're not going to go too deep into atomic structure, other videos are going to touch on isotopes and electronic structure. All we're going to talk about today is just what you need to understand the terms atomic number and mass number. So, an atom is made of three things. We will have heard the terms proton, we'll have heard the term electron, and we'll have heard the term neutron. And we have to be able to identify those in an atom. The electrons are very easy to identify, they're just the ones on the outside. So I have this one here, this one here, this one here, three of my electrons are on the outside. The protons are what we find on the inside of the atom. They are in the nucleus and they have a positive charge. Now on this diagram, it didn't actually show us um, which ones were the protons and which ones weren't, but I knew instantly that the red ones were the protons because actually we always have the same number of protons as we do electrons. The protons have a positive charge, the electrons have a negative charge. So I knew instantly that because we had three electrons on the outside, that the red ones inside the nucleus must be the protons because we always have the same number. Um, so what's this left over in the nucleus? Well, they are our neutrons and we can count four of those. So we have three protons, three electrons and two, uh, sorry, and four neutrons. Now, what makes one element different from another element isn't the fact that the atoms are arranged in a different way. They're not. They all have protons and neutrons in the nucleus and electrons on the outside. But it's the number of protons, neutrons and electrons that changes when we go from one element to a next. And that is what these numbers here, the mass number and atomic number, tell us. So going back to uh, an easier example, this is helium and we have an atomic number of two. Um, we have a mass number of four. So how can I use those numbers to go back to here and figure out how many protons, neutrons and electrons we should have? Well, I'm always going to start with the atomic number. The atomic number used to be called the proton number, so it should be very easy to remember that fact to figure out what the atomic number is telling us. And here uh, it's telling us that we have two protons because it's an atomic number of two. Now, if you remember what I said when we were talking about this slide here, I instantly knew that the red things were the protons because there were three of them and there were three electrons. We said that we always have the same number of electrons as we do protons. So even though there isn't a specific number next to the element to tell me the number of electrons, I can just use the atomic number. So the atomic number can tell me the number of protons, and I'm also going to use it to give me the number of electrons. So the atomic number, super, super useful. Okay, so I've got two protons and two electrons. Now, the, the mass number is often, uh, is often confused as being the number of neutrons, because after all, that would be super simple, wouldn't it? If the atomic number tells us the number of protons and electrons, why shouldn't the mass number be the number of neutrons? Unfortunately, it's not. Unfortunately, the mass number is what we call the nucleon number. It's the number of things in the middle of the, the, the atom, the number of things in the nucleus. So if I have a quick uh, look at this atom here, I can see three red, four black. I have seven things inside that nucleus. And of those seven things, we know that three of them are protons. So how many neutrons must I have? How many things do I have to add on to three protons to get my number of neutrons? And the answer is four, and there are four neutrons there. And it's the same when I'm looking at these numbers here. I know that my mass number is four, so I have four things in the middle. 
but my atomic number is two. So what, what have I got to add on? If I've got two protons and I know I need to get to four, how many neutrons must there be? And the answer is going to be two. Now, that's hard for some people to visualize. So a much, much, much simpler rule is that simply if I take the mass number and I minus the atomic number from it, so in this case, four minus two, that will give me the number of neutrons. And that will work for any element. So the mass number, take away the atomic number, will give me the number of neutrons. Now, if I show you the atom of helium, uh, shown as a diagram, we can see what we've just modeled. We looked at two protons, okay? We said there'd be two protons because of the atomic number. We can see those in red here with a positive charge. We said there would be two electrons, and we can see the two electrons here. And, whoops, and we said that there would be two neutrons because four minus two is two, and here are our two neutrons uh, here. Now, this works with any element whatsoever. Uh, so just a quick recap, that the atomic number is the bottom number, and that tells us number of protons, and it will also tell us number of electrons, okay? The mass number is the biggest number, and that will tell me the number of neutrons only if I take away the atomic number from it. Now, in future videos, we're going to be looking at isotopes and electronic structure, and we will work our way through the, uh, the entire specification in chemistry and your other sciences and maths as well. Uh, but for now, I hope that's helped just with those terms. Good luck. Now, if you found this video useful, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget, if you click on the playlist button, you'll be able to see videos just like this for biology, chemistry, physics, and maths. And don't forget that patrons of the channel will not only have a say in what videos are made next, but you'll also have the opportunity to send me questions about your GCSE studies through the Patreon app. So all that's left for me to say is goodbye and good luck.